the doctor came, I saw her face and she's like, actually, I'm going to move you to a different uh, room. When I went to this room, it was like three doctors and then me by myself. Doctor come and say, okay, really easy. You have two options or you start getting in treatments, you know, having chemos and going in injections, uh, treatments and all that, or you die. Obviously, dying is not an option. Some frustration that I had in the past was that, well, unfortunately I got sick. Well, unfortunately I got sick. So a little bit of my story, beginning being sick, is that um, I was like around 21 and um, you know I found something in my breast and I thought that was like normal I mean, you know like hit like cysts or something so I went to the hospital after you know few tests that I had and it's just my breasts start like getting really weird looking so going in there, and they told me you have you have a really big cyst. So we had to remove it before it's something bad. So that's what it happened. So I came and they had a surgery. They took everything out, so it was free of anything that probably would be worse in the future. And I was like for a year, like okay. So it was like nothing, you know, what's going on. Uh, and then one time talking, you know, with my boyfriend saying, hey, you know, how about for we prepared to be having kids and stuff like that, but I do want to be prepared myself and be healthy, you know, to be able to have a kid. And he agreed with me and everything, so I went to the hospital or the clinic, you know, and check it out, and the doctor remember saying, everything is okay. Had something in my heart saying, are you sure I'm okay? So she's like, no, yeah, go for it, you know, you're good. Like literally passing two weeks after that, I was in my work and I had like huge pain. I didn't know if it was my period or it was like kidney stones because I actually had a few like background in having kidney stones. So the pain was like really like, I don't know what's going on and I'm sweating and vomiting and couldn't even move. Like no breed, no nothing, it was terrible. So one of my manager went over there and was like, Lucy, you have to go to an emergency. By that time, I couldn't even move. It was like, Lizzie was pretty much passed out. Went to the hospital and, you know, nurses and doctors having me some tests and everything. They actually thought that I was having like a miscarriage or something. Um, and then they had like some like, like ultrasounds and stuff like that. They told me, you're fine. It's just a little like cysts that come out to you, variants, you know, and usually we are like being a woman, every single cycle we have that. So it's kind of like, a psycho normal thing of a woman. Um, so that's what it happened. I, you know, I was like, okay, I'm okay. But then I went to my doctor and they said, you know, they told me to follow up with you. This is what happened to me. And my doctor is like, I wanna be honest. It's not like I do not believe what the hospital said, but I wanna do again all the tests on my own to finalize what we can do about this painful and what's going on with you so I say okay so you know I had all again all the tests and a few more and the day that I went to get my results I remember being like a little little like you know room and then she told me give me one second I really want somebody else you know to review the results so I I'm like okay that was like one two hours after and I'm like oh, hello I'm still here <laughs> Um, and then the doctor came, I saw her face, and she's like, actually, I'm going to move you to a different uh, room. When I went to this room, it was like three doctors, and then me by myself. So one of the doctors come to me, and he's like, you know, why are you here? And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm coming to receive my results, you know? And the doctor, the doctor come and say, okay, really easy. You have two options or you start getting in treatments, you know, having chemos and going in injections, uh, treatments and all that, or you die. Wow, the hit, you know, like, what I'm going to do. I get a little, like, yeah, upset. 
because obviously dying is not an option. I have no clue where that I got the strain in that moment and I said okay well, what I'm going to do so they told me well the first to see how advanced you are and I'm like well what I have so they said well you have a few things so we are going to to diagnosticate what advance you have and the sickness or illness or condition you have we need to open up and check it out inside so um, they didn't even know exactly what I had until they opened it. So I went to a surgery like the following week. So the so what they really wanted to do for me to move on in my life, it was, you know, had the hysterectomy and remove everything. And I, in that time, you know, I didn't have feelings, no nothing. I said, well, I just want to be healthy and just do it, you know. I want to take my life back and just do it. So, you know, that was the plan. And the surgery, we were in the surgery. And I think it is, I, I see it two sides. I see it like it's kind of like a hope that actually they couldn't remove the other side. So it was just half, so I do not have half. The other half, it was too damaged. So they wanted to start like treating it all and uh, start treating and trying to kind of freeze, you know, um, and see if it would be better to maybe in the future remove everything and then be okay. So finally, but the results was that since I technically got my period, I had endometriosis, which I didn't know. And like little short, doesn't have cure either. So a woman technically will be living with pain all their life. And also I have endometriosis, which is something like a normal of a woman to have, but it's like feeding each other together and growing in my uterus. And after all, I found that I have pre-cancer cells as well, and I'm in stage four. So it's advanced and the doctors say we need treatments to start now. So I went to all the treatments. Um, it's been almost a year and a half with all the treatments. Um, I'm strong, I'm here, I'm really positive. I think that yes, it was hard, and more because I didn't have no family here. So technically, I was just tech like here by myself and getting the strain from God, I guess. I think and I believe in Him, and there is something else better for me right there after all this is happening. So because I didn't have no family here, you know, I didn't want to be just in home and be depressed and, you know, I, I think that I had to look for something. And I remember um, having a snapshot of my friend Jessica Rodriguez. And I always see her snapshots about MP, you know, getting in a workout. And I always see like women's, you know, and, and I'm like, huh. I send her a message and I say, hey, what kind of gym do you go? And she's like, MP is just for girls. And I'm, I'm like, really, do you think I can just go and try? And she's like, yeah, here, this is the phone number. Same day, call, and I got like a free week. And I came in, since then I'm still here. So being now here in MP and having pretty much a second family, you know, a family that I actually choose, and I do not feel alone anymore. You know, I have them here, which they encourage me, and they make me like, they put that hand on me, there's something that I need it, and push me. I love to challenge myself, I push myself. I see myself really toned in my muscles, 
uh, I've been seeing results in like probably three months that I'm in here and I cannot wait to see the body that I want to take it back. <laughs>